Hey y'all, it's Spiritual Life Code 43 and I'm here to give you the mid-month of September year 2023. Reading for the zodiac sign of Cancer. If you guys are new to my channel, welcome and blessings. If you are a returning viewer, watcher, and or subscriber, I'm sending you guys so much joy, luck, love, harmony, happiness, all that good stuff. Welcome, welcome back, Cancers. You guys rock. I appreciate all of you guys. If you guys are cross-watchers, I'm sending you prayers, healing, and blessings to you and to all of us here. Please remember that when it comes to any kind of readings, whether it be tarot, oracle, intuitive, pendulums, teacup, coffee cups, any kind of readings, that it's important that you guys focus on the energy and the messages and how it correlates with you in your life. Please never ever force a reading. What's for you will be for you. What is not, please leave behind for somebody else as it may benefit them in their life. Always exercise your free will. I always recommend that everybody first and foremost go to our Heavenly Father God. Jesus Christ, your beautiful angels, healers, helpers, and guides for your most significant guidance and direction. They got you. They're with you. You have loved ones. You have a spiritual team, spiritual family. They're watching over you. They're with you. They love you. They only want the best for you. Always trust God. Believe in yourself and do what's best for you guys at all times for you and your families. Please continue to like, share, subscribe, and comment. Thank you guys so much for supporting my channel. I appreciate you guys very much for that. All the information about my channel and my services are listed in the description box below. Please feel free to email me if you guys have any questions. Everything's been prayed and meditated on. I have the spread set out just to save a little bit of time. This is the karma reading. It can get very deep. Please click off if the subject matter is too sensitive for you. Do what's best for your mental health. It gets very deep at times. We wish bad and no ill will on any on nobody, on anybody. We don't wish bad on nobody. This is just a reminder that they did not get away with hurting you. This is preparation. It's for healing. Vengeance is the Lord's. I'm just a channel. I'm just a vessel. God used me to, um, to serve him and help others and help others heal. And I do love what I do. So pray for others. Pray for yourselves. And let's jump into the reading. The overall energy is reap what they sow. People are reaping what they've sown. I think this is very, I want to say it's it's the spotlight now. The spotlight is on the narcissist. The spotlight is on people who are evil, psychopaths, sociopaths, people who need help, people who refuse to get the treatment. They refuse to change. The spotlight is on them. Because the karma is hitting them and it's hitting hard and fast. I'm hearing it like furious. Um, they're reaping what they've sown, which means they have many consequences and obstacles. They're going through changes and challenges they don't want. They didn't expect. Most of them never think they're going to get caught. They're very arrogant people. They always feel like they can pay people off or... Be too charming and out talk people and woo people and, you know, their lies and games and trickery would work and it did not. All they did is accumulate loads of bad karma that they're now facing and it's not easy. They don't want to have to deal with it, but they're being forced to because God don't play and his karma does not miss. Somebody did not put in any effort. This could be a soulmate, twin flame, ex-husband, ex-wife, somebody you know feels real romantic. Could also be family members or people you know. They never met you halfway. They didn't show up like you showed up for them. They were not willing to cooperate and help you to build. And it was very frustrating is what I'm hearing. You guys are very frustrated with this person. Because they always said that they would do better. And you guys could have given them time to grow and evolve. And they never did. It was very one-sided. And this was very unfair to you. This person is a serial cheater. They're for the streets. And I feel like they're a repeat offender, which means they've done it before. And you guys give them a chance after they came back crying and wailing and begging and sobbing that they wouldn't do it again. They've changed. They only want you. They love you. And you guys see that it's all lies. They're just a pretty face or they used to be anyways. You don't find them charming. You don't find them appealing. Because you value loyalty and they don't. It's like you feel cheated. And you feel like once a cheater is always a cheater. You guys feel cheated out of real love. 
you know, you guys, everybody has options, but in a relationship like a marriage or a marital union or a divine union or something like that, to be with your counterpart or be with your significant other, you guys took your vow seriously. This person did not. And it's really sad. And you guys feel like once a cheater, always a cheater. You feel like this person will never change because they always do worse. They get sneakier. They try to find ways to cheat in a way where they won't get caught or they try to see if they can be more evil, really. Just find other ways instead of being a better person. They don't heal. They don't grow. And they are spiraling out of control. Their whole life is in disarray. Completely imbalanced. I'm hearing neither here nor there. They don't know if they're coming or going. I feel like addictions are at play here. And it could be a sexual addiction as well. They try to get healing through sex and romance. It's like they, they pull your energy that way. They go about things the wrong way. This person, they could be really beautiful on the outside. Very uh, gorgeous, beautiful eyes, hair. They may have a beautiful body or just very attractive people. But it's like you don't see that anymore. You see a fraud. You see a fake. They're looking old or they look like they've aged. They look like the miles they put on their body. They look like you know, what they put other people through, what they put you through specifically, they look like it now. And their hair, it's like the way they smell, it's coming out of their pores. Like if they're, if they're alcoholics, like you smell it or, you know, they they don't give themselves the self care. They try to dress it up, make it up, put on the makeup and, you know, take a bath and, you know, try to look like they're together, but really they don't have it together. And it shows in how they, they look. They can groom the outside all they want. What's inside is coming out. And this person is broken. They're insecure. Very disrespectful. They lack self-respect. They lack that. And it shows on the outside. Like you can look at them. And they don't want to look at you too long. You know, their old tricks, their old charming ways. It's not working. A lot of you guys are not touching this person. You are not sexually attracted to this person anymore. Because they've turned you off because they gave your love and that positive energy that you fed it to them. They gave that elsewhere to, to the streets. Now they look like the streets. You just, you don't want to be bothered. You block this person out your heart. And they are facing poverty for hurting you. They're losing homes, money, jobs, opportunities. I'm hearing schools. So maybe they were kicked out of school or something like that. Or they're not getting, you know, money for school or something like that. Or maybe their checks were revoked. Checks could be balanced. They are going into poverty. This person is irresponsible with money. You know, spirit always hits them pockets. That's a major way that they reap what they sow. It's through the things they care about the most. Their money. The way they look. Their facade. Their image. Their reputation. All that's being tarnished. They should not have betrayed you. You guys didn't deserve that. You deserve the same loyalty and love that you gave. This person was all about make-believe, making something look like it was in the righteous. It's that make-believe, that fake, that fakeness, and they created distance. You don't want to be near them. A lot of you guys don't want to talk to them. You don't want to associate it. Even if you guys have kids, you guys rather text. You guys rather have a mediator. You don't want to deal with this person. It's hard for you to look at this person because you lost all respect for somebody you were so in love with and only wanted good things for. You wanted to build a legacy, but they left you begging for a text, begging for time, begging for a hug, begging for love, begging for energy, begging for real intimacy. It's just not there. They left you waiting, stood you up, didn't show up for dates, didn't plan things accordingly. They left all the work on you, the responsibilities with the kids. You guys were doing the cleaning, the cooking, checking in on the children and working your jobs. Some of you guys had more than one job. Like this person was very selfish. They didn't appreciate you. And they would come back begging and pleading. Some of them sobbing on knees, getting on the ground, putting on this little tip of tantrum. You guys feel like it's all a show from a jokester. You guys don't have time for this. You feel like what they did was the last straw and it's beyond repair. You don't feel like it's repairable. You don't want to try again. You're done. They're using all their old tricks and it's just not working. 
you're not turned on. They completely turned you off. And this is the way they made it. This is their karma. Like, you're done. You gave the chances, even when you felt like they didn't deserve it. Because you were so committed. You meant what you said. And they took you for granted time and time again. This person was a true user. It's like you guys don't want anything to do with them. You're not settling for less. You see what they're capable of. You see what they can do. All they did was break your heart. And this was so unfair to you. Some of them broke the kid's heart as well. If you guys share kids together. By not being there. By not showing up. Leaving food and the cooking. All the responsibilities on you. The baths and, you know, putting the kids to bed and hugging them. And, you know, where's mom and where's dad? It's like they were always missing in action. Or just, or they gave off that abandonment energy. They were never fully immersed or involved. This person is a sex addict. A lot of people are. It's really sad. This is a user. They were only out with out for what they could take, like a true opportunist. And it's like, how could they do this to you? This is so wrong. They don't make good connections. Their crowd are always people who are low vibrational, people who are trifling and evil, sneaky, very sneaky energy, like them. This is what they've manifested. People like them who don't care about them who use them for their money. What they've done to you is being done to them. You guys have learned to truly tap in and believe in yourself. Tap into your intuitive gifts. Believing. You guys are finally believing your affirmations. You know you deserve better. You know you want more. This has given you clarity dealing with these narcissists. You guys have clarity who they are and what you never want again. You know the signs. So if you ever see it, you're cutting people off right there at the door. You're not letting them in your heart. You guys have balanced. And a lot of you guys are still working on this too. But a, somebody here has balanced their heart chakra. They've balanced their chakras. Meaning your emotions. You guys are learning how to balance that rejection. To be more open to people who show you they have earned your trust. Earned your love. The reciprocity. The fairness. The respect when they show up for you. You want something that's fair and equal. You deserve that. Something healthy. This could have been a very passionate, very romantic, highly sexual connection. And that's fine, but it became toxic because that was the main part. You know, the intimacy of getting to know each other on a deeper level, building together, tapping into thoughts and feelings where the respect wasn't there. It became more like an obsession. And that was not healthy. So you guys learn how to adopt more healthier attachment styles, which is beautiful. That's a part of you guys breaking generational curses and, and such. And that's that's good. You needed to do that. And you feel more balanced. You guys breathe better. You can handle rejection better. You understand who's hurt and who needs to be healed and who's a lost soul and who's in the dark and who's having mental issues. Like you can pinpoint it now. And you guys are just focusing on blessings and upgrades and they're coming in. Upgrades after upgrades, better relationships, better, you know, surroundings of like friends, your circle is better. You want healthier people around you, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally healthy people who can hold a conversation without cursing you out or putting you down or attacking your self-esteem. None of that. You want upgrades in everything, a better home, a better car, not just the material wealth, but the physical wealth, a balance. Someone who's wholesome and loving and loyal and kind-hearted like you. This is what you're manifesting and it's coming in. So look forward to upgrades. You guys deserve this. So these people, you know, they use their looks, but looks fade. They are so ran through from cheating. This person really needs to practice celibacy and self-love. They need to surrender to God. They should have worked together with you. A lot of them will come back begging again. You guys don't even want to hear it. You're done. You guys cut them off. They're facing a lot of poverty, a lot of money issues. I'm seeing bank accounts being closed. You guys are just believing your affirmations, feeding yourself self-love and self-care. You guys are doing it right. Keep your money for you and your kids and the things that you need. You're focusing on your spiritual legacy. 
and a financial legacy for you and your kids if you have them. You want better. You guys are focusing on a better life and it's here. It's coming. You guys keep doing the work. You will be blessed. Let them reap what they've sown. They need to surrender to God. They need to get it right with God and themselves. They have work to do. Keep walking your path. It's not easy, but you guys know you made the right decision. Blessings are coming. Okay, Cancer, this has been your reading for the mid-month of September, your 2023. I hope the messages in this reading resonate with all of you, or as many of you as humanly possible. I wish you all abundance, happiness, harmony, peace, love, joy, all that good stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. God bless you. Bye, Cancer.